Hi, welcome to Whispering Pines Farm. Got my first harvest out of the garden today. I harvested, I've already started, but I harvested some cabbage and I've got broccoli and peas. So I've got to get those processed today. Um, what I'm going to show you is the cabbage I'm going to make into sauerkraut. Okay, the first thing you have to do when you're making sauerkraut, I'm making a fermented sauerkraut, is um, I've got a hole here. I need to make sure that there's nothing in there. With fermented sauerkraut, what you are, yeah, there's some duck in there. Um, it's just cabbage and salt. And you, um, sorry, I can't work and talk at the same time, but um, you, Rinse your cabbage, make sure there's no ickies in there, and then chop it up, and I do a second rinse after I chop it, and then you throw it in a big bowl, and put some salt on it, um, I just do it to taste, and then... Um, you uh, massage it and let, cover it with a towel and let it sit for about an hour. Before you start chopping it up and everything, you want to save a couple nice leaves of the cabbage to go over the top of your um, ferment. I have a small kitchen. So I'm losing stuff as I do this. You see pieces that aren't quite chopped enough to your liking, just pull them back out and chop again. Mm. 
children. these. Uh, they need to be chopped. do a couple tablespoons of salt. I use Celtic sea salt. You, any all natural salt that's not been iodized, had anything added to it, works well. You don't want iodine or anything like that in your slaw. It'll in, if you're fermenting, it'll kill your ferment. And then you just massage it and get that salt. Worked into the cabbage and it's going to start releasing juice. I don't know if you can see that or not. But Woo! this isn't water from my sink. This is water from the cabbage. And it's going to get all wilty. And I was hoping to have enough. I may, I have a red cabbage that's store bought in my fridge that needs to be used up. I think I may go ahead and get it because this isn't going to fill my half gallon jar and I'd really prefer to do just one jar so okay this is a organic cabbage that I bought at the store and it needs used up. It's still nice and firm, but This is going to turn my slaw a red color. It'll be really pretty. And it's adding those antioxidants that the red and purple veggies have in them.
going to put about another half a teaspoon, or tablespoon, I mean, of salt in here. All. Look how pretty that is. All that, whoop, <laughs> all that purple and green cabbage. Now the liquid will turn a purpley red just because of the purple cabbage. But and you'll lose a lot of the green color. But it'll still be a very pretty coleslaw. And tasty. It's getting wet. Okay. It's salty, but not overly salty. And that's about where I want it. So, now what I'm going to do is get a clean towel. And I'm just going to cover it. And let it sit here. for about an hour um, and then I'll come back and uh, finish off the sauerkraut. Okay, it's been about an hour now. I've got my clean sterilized jar. I ran it through the dishwasher. Um, if you don't have a dishwasher, you can just um, run boiling wa water over it and let it sit in there. And um, now I am going to take this slaw, coleslaw, and see that purple, I don't know if you can see it or not, see that purple liquid there? It made a lot of liquid. Look how pretty that is. I just love it. Anyway, I'm going to put all of that into this jar and um, pack it down. really really good this is an antique packer I'm not sure what the correct name is for it but I got this and um, washed it really good and rubbed it down with some coconut oil and it works really really well for me
You see that liquid coming up? That's not added water. That is just from my cabbage, from it sitting and soaking in. And those three heads of cabbage that I did, two were small and one was about, a, the purple one was about a medium one, but it is just the right amount for this half gallon jar. Now something I forgot to do is get my um, fermenting lid ready. So I did sterilize in the dishwasher the um, lid that goes to this jar, so I'll just use it. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is take this piece of cabbage leaf and I'm going to stuff it down inside here and tuck it down really good to where all my loose bits of cabbage stays underneath the brine. Now you want about an inch to an inch and a half headspace. Which is about right there. So Look at that. And I'm going to pour whoop, my liquid in there and get this loose cabbage off of there. I'm going to have purple coleslaw. Mmm, so good. Now the next thing you do since this has no um, grease or anything in it I'm just going to wipe the top off and since we've got to go on an errand my husband's trucks air conditioning went out and we've got to go pick it up it's ready so since I don't have the other wide mouth um, lid ready to go I will just put that on there and I'm gonna put it under a plate or a plate under it I should say just like that to keep any um, overflow from happening and then once I get my other lid on I'll put it on I'll show you what it looks like these are some fermented limes that I've done and this is a fermenting lid from Ball. It has a stainless steel spring in it that holds your food down underneath the brine. And um, I've got to throw one of these in the dishwasher and then pop it on there. That way it has a valve here that lets the gases out but doesn't allow... Um, oxygen back in when oxygen in a ferment is your enemy 
Okay, well that's all there is to fermenting sauerkraut. Um, I'll check this in about seven days, see where it's at, if I like the flavor of it or not. If it's not quite where I want it, I'll leave it sitting out on my counter until it is. And then um, once it's at the flavor I like, I'll pop it in the refrigerator and we will have sauerkraut to eat with our meals. This is a live food. It's full of probiotics, full of the micro, microns, microbes sorry, and bacteria that is so important for your gut health. And I really want us to focus on getting more of those in our diet. And you don't just have to eat yogurt. I'm allergic to dairy. I can't do yogurt. So I can do the nut milk yogurts, but not the dairy yogurt. So having this, I can eat a tablespoon or so of it every day as a side to my meal and get those important bacteria and microorganisms into my gut so that I have a healthy gut. So I hope you try this. Fermenting is a wonderful way of preserving your food. Please like and share me on your social media and hit the subscribe and notification bell. Until next time, God bless.